Hello, and welcome to RBCM at Home. My name is Kim Goff, and I'm a learning program developer at the Royal BC Museum. I'm coming to you from my home, which is located on the territories of the Songhees and Esquimalt First Nations, the Lekwungen speaking people in Victoria, British Columbia. During this pandemic period, it has felt at times as if everything is upside down, but we do our best to cobble together some semblance of the normal and try to lean into the familiar. One familiar tradition for many over the summer months is to go on vacation. So for RBCM at home in the months of July and August, we have been virtually visiting museums and cultural organizations across the province, going on a road trip together. So I'm glad everyone has buckled up. We started in the Caribou Mountains of BC Central Interior with a visit to Barkerville Historic Town and Park. From there, we headed southwest to the place where mountains, rivers, and people meet in Whistler at the Squamish Lillooet Cultural Center. Our third stop was the Southern Interior near Castlegar at the Duke of Bore Discovery Center. Burnaby and the Nikkei National Museum and Cultural Center was our next stop, followed by the Jewish Museum and Archives of British, <laughs> British Columbia, which is located in Vancouver. We then headed northwest to the coastal border town of Stewart, where they have everything from horse snowshoes to debris from a crashed U.S. bomber plane. Today, we're heading to the foothills of the BC Rockies in northeastern British Columbia. It's a 13-hour drive north from Vancouver or two hours south of Fort St. John. Coal mining, oil and gas exploration, forestry, and recreational tourism all abound in this beautifully rugged area of the province. A main tourist destination of Tumblr Ridge is the, is the Tumblr Ridge Dinosaur Discovery Gallery. To show us all around and tell us more about the gallery and research center is General Manager Zena Conlin. Hi, Zena. Hi, Kim. Um, fond hello from uh, Tumblr Ridge, where we are located on the traditional lands of the Dunza, Soto, Sakani, Cree, and Metis people in the territories of Halfway River First Nation, Kelly Lake, McLeod Lake Indian Band, Soto First Nation, and West Moberly First Nations on Treaty 8 territory. Um, so Treaty 8 is uh, the, the, the largest uh, number territory in Canada and encompasses Northeast BC, Northern Alberta, and Southwest Saskatchewan, and a little part of the uh, Northwest Territories. Um, so we are also located in a UNESCO Global Geopark, which is incredible. So um, that is a kind of a, a single unified uh, geographical area that has international significance, um, which kind of brings us to dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So the geopark covers a large area in and around Tumblr Ridge. It's not like a, a national park, is it? It's No, it's different from a national park. Um, so it's kind of a, a ground up in, initiative that um, supports um, sustainable development. So it's about working with industry here, working with resource developers, um, working with the community, working with uh, tourism, um, working with uh, local nations on the sustainable development of this area where conservation and industry uh, coexist um, to uh, create economic development opportunities. Well, that's great. It's a, it's a wonderful initiative. So people might be drawn up there for the mountains and the waterfalls and the trails, but there's also the fantastic um, Dinosaur Discovery Gallery. When did the, the Discovery Gallery and Research Center open? Um, so we became, um, so the Tumblr Ridge Museum Foundation um, was incorporated in 2002, uh, very shortly after the discovery of our first uh, dinosaur trackway. Um, and we moved into the building that we're currently in, in 2009. And um, this is where our main display gallery is now. Um, and, you know, I'll flip my camera around here in a second. We'll, we can go on a, a little bit of a tour while we chat. Excellent. Yeah, because it's exciting, I think, uh, for folks to know a little bit more about what they would see if they came to visit you. Yeah, absolutely. So let me just flip this around. There we go. So right now, this is our education room. So this is where we do all of our uh, programming when we're allowed to have people in. Um, COVID have, has definitely changed things for a lot of people. 
Um, so uh, this, you know, when we have our education groups, they come in here and do crafts and, and learning and that kind of thing. Right now, we actually have one of our summer students set up um, doing some painting and uh, painting some trackway prints that we actually sell in the gift shop. Cool. Yep. So we'll, we'll take a little tour through the gallery here. Hello, people. <laughs> so is the museum open? Yes, we are open. Um, right now we are uh, open Thursday through Tuesday from nine to five. We're closed on Wednesday so we can do our deep clean and make sure everything is, is you know, clean and safe for everybody to come in. Um, and starting in a, in a couple of weeks, we'll be going back to our winter hours where we'll be closed Tuesdays and Wednesdays because all of our summer students will be heading back off to university. <laughs> So um, the, ex the expanse of our collection is, is, is incredible. So we have um, everything from kind of marine reptiles, plants, dinosaurs. Um, so spanning about 300 million years right now. Um, and we're hoping there are, there are, there's, places in the geopark that we know date back about 500 million years. So that's kind of the next step for exploration. So this is kind of some of our ice age stuff. So this is a, uh, our, our mammoth tusk and a bison skull. Well, fabulous. Folks here at the Royal BC Museum would be familiar with mammoths. Um, in regards to your collection, um, what kind of staff do you have? I'm assuming you have um, paleontologists on board uh, who are building this collection or where does your collection come from? Yeah, um, so we do have a paleontologist staff, uh, but most of our discoveries actually come from the public. Um, so as people are out on hiking trails, uh, you know, exploring and, and our area, throughout the peace region, you know, the discoveries, they let us know where they found them. Um, and then we go out to the site and collect um, and bring them back into our, into our facility. Great. You, you cut off just a little bit there. I'm imagining it, it's pretty important if somebody does find something in your area, should they leave it where they found it? Take some pictures? Should they collect it? What should they do? Yes. So uh, it is best to leave it, leave um, any fossil finds where they're found, um, collect GPS coordinates if possible, um, or at least kind of know on the trail whereabouts you are. Um, and yeah, take photos and then come into the museum and let us know or email our curator. And we will, we can either go out to the site with you or we'll go out and, um, but if the, the, the best way is, is to leave, leave everything where it's found. Excellent. I believe, um, yeah, the story of amateur finds are really quite exciting. There was just one in the news um, recently uh, from the Isle of Wright where an amateur fossil, um, Hunter has found what's yes. turning out to be a new species. Is it a velociraptor, I think? Yes, yeah, yeah. We were quite excited to, to hear of that. Any species, it's exciting. Yeah, new, as they say, it's the first, yeah. Oh no, I'm seeing the different one, but yeah, new species are very unusual. So do you have species that are unique to your area? Oh, we do. And um, this is the one we're actually looking at right now. So this is a, um, a fossil of a coelacanth. And so this is a, uh, a marine um, fish that was thought to be extinct, but then was discovered off the, uh, the, the coast of Africa. Um, now, what we have here is uh, we have a type specimen. So this is truly unique. So where coelacanths are um, generally have kind of the, the rounded fin, 
Um, our example here had the fork fin and it is uh, the only place in the world where we have um, where we have we have this this type of fossil record. Well, wow. and a type specimen is is really special for folks who who aren't in paleontology or the museum world. It, can you say a little bit more about how you get a type specimen or how it earns that distinction? Yeah, so a type specimen is one that um, it's 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 the first one of its kind. It is unique. It hasn't been uh, discovered anywhere else. Um, and yeah, it's 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 the first. Yeah, it, it's it's and it's. Um, oh, go ahead. Oh, okay. Sorry. It's the one that scientists can use oh, sorry. To, to identify. Um, other similar species. So it's like, it's a quintessential um, fossil. Yes. Oh, that's great. So coelacanth was in a marine yeah. environment. So you're saying Tumbler Ridge at one point was under the water. Yes, absolutely. And we know that. Um, so I'll kind of show you our, our center display here where we have um, kind of ripples. Um, track so we located um, basically kind of there's an NC that um, what is now the Arctic um, down through uh, Mexico to Mexico. Um, and that's kind of where a lot of our fossil records come from. So on a lot of our um, larger pieces, um, there's this kind of ripple effect here, which shows um, water patterns um, and and that's how we know where, um, where, so our, our dinosaur footprints and trackways come from this inland sea, but our, because we're so close to the mountains, um, a lot of when the mountains were, were pushed up, um, a lot of the, the marine specimens that, that we've collected have actually come from from white high up, and that was all seabed. It was all seabed at one point. So if um, we go over here, I'll show you actually a map. Yeah. So this is a bit of a map of where we are. And so Tumblr Ridge, you can see is right here. And then as we get further into the geopark, the, our, our rock formations get older and older and older. Mm. Yeah, it's fascinating. And now, when you showed us the center, collecting from. Great. Uh, when you showed us the center display, we saw um, a dinosaur footprint. <laughs> These, uh, that's an example of a trackway. Yes. And, and you're saying that the museum really got its start with the discovery of a trackway. Can you tell us a little bit more about trackways and what they are, why they're important, what they tell us? Yes. So uh, the, the first trackway that was found um, was, so the story is there's two young boys, uh, you know, tubing down um, one of the creeks close to town. They fell off their tubes and climbed up onto the, the side of the bank and um, discovered footprints. And they decided they were dinosaur footprints and went back and told their parents who you know, it was a little bit more difficult to convince them, um, but they went down, they called in a, a specialist in, in trackway um, work for, for this time period. And yes, indeed, they were trackways. And so what this represents um, is it, it gives an idea of, of size, of the dinosaurs. Um, it gives, you know, direction, it gives movement, it shows pattern. Um, and it's really important in um, kind of identifying behavior um, and, and growth and that, that kind of thing. You can tell a lot from some footprints, it sounds like. Yes, yeah, we can. Um, 
and, and a lot of it is it, so we can tell if a uh, if a dinosaur was walking or running. Um, we have found uh, sites that we actually we we run tours down there. Just it it looks like a grand pattern of all kinds of from different dinosaur species. Um, so it was obviously on a kind of a well-traveled tra corridor. Um, and then sometimes you find um, trackways of just a single um, example. And it, it just, it, it provides a different type of context. Right. Um, and it puts them in, in an environment. So then you start looking at what else is around these trackways. What other things can you find there that tells us what they were doing while they were walking along that path? So Zena, you, you just passed two small dinosaurs. Can you go back to them? Yeah. Can you tell us what, what they are? Um, well, these little guys here haven't actually been named yet. Um, um, there are some uh, researchers in the U.S. working that have been studying this and doing the research on them um, and we have yet to hear back on what they what they are and what they have been named. Wow so that could become a, a unique fossil to your area as well. It could, it could. Um, and that's the thing with, with research is it takes a lot of time because there's a lot to, that needs to be um, looked at and, and compared and, um, and not just within our region or North America. These, you know, they, this is a global um, kind of uh, project. Um, and so it's compared you know what other researchers are doing in other countries as well. Now that's a beautiful view of the large dinosaur in the background. Can you tell yes. us what that one is? Yes, he is an Acrocanthosaurus. So he is um, of the Tyrannosaur family. Um, he's not a T-Rex. We don't, unfortunately, we don't have T-Rex here in Tumblr. Our dinosaurs here, are, our fossil record is a little bit older than that. Um, but he is an example of one of the kind of largest meat, e meat eaters um, kind of found in this, this area or tracks that have been found in this area. So have, no, have you found any fossils in that area or just the tracks? Um, for these big guys, just the tracks, um, wow. we have found, well, that's a bit of a misconception. So we have found, um, teeth. We have teeth mm. from these guys and I'll bring you over to here. So this is kind of our hadrosaur exhibit. So we have, um, in our collection, although still in case, um, what is believed, uh, it's the bones from uh, BC's first um, complete dinosaur. Um, and he was a hadrosaur. Um, but what's really interesting about the find was uh, the, all the tyrannosaur teeth that were oh. found in the same, same fossil bed. So we do have some some uh, some bone fossil, but with the tyrannosaurs, it is it is mostly mostly the teeth. Excellent. Now that mm -hmm. large that large meat eater was eyeing up another dinosaur in your diorama. It yes. looks smaller. So that the one the one he's got his eye on. What is that one? Uh, so this little guy over here, and I'll show you this. We have one on this side as well. Um, these are ankylosaurs. Pilosaurs. So they are kind of like the big, 
big, the ankylosaur, so they're kind of like the big giant um, armored um, dinosaurs, and they sometimes had kind of like the club tail on the back. Mm -hmm. um, so the, I'll show you part of this, this is really interesting. So we have three sets of, of, of tracks here. Um, so this one here would have been a, a, a juvenile or you like a, a, a really young one. This would have been a juvenile. So the, so on the bottom is the back footprint and then the top one is the front, front foot. So it kind of the front foot has that kind of almost half moon shape to it like that, that curve. Um, and then this one here is a full grown. So our Dina, example, yeah. Dina, how, how big is that compared to your hand? Well, it's under Ooh. the glass. Wow, but yeah. very big, okay. Pretty big. <laughs> yeah. So these guys could grow to about eight meters long, which is essentially the width of the entire center display. So wow. our little guys that we have on display are, we figure about the same size as the juveniles, which is this middle track here. And they were armored dinosaurs, you said, with a club tail. So I imagine they're going to put up a pretty good fight. Fight. Yeah. Yeah, I would think so. Um, they were herbivores, so they are plant eaters. Um, and I'll, I'll actually kind of lean over here and kind of show you this trackway here. So this is what their, their trackway looks like. And all of the trackways that we have in our display are based on actual peels and track sites that we have found. So I'll show you a picture here. So these are what, what, uh, yeah, that's, that's very helpful to see the anklets or sort of illustrated and imagined. Oh, there's a question here, Zena. Um, someone who missed it at the beginning. Okay. Um, can you give us again the time time period for this scene that we're seeing? Um, so this would be uh, during the Cretaceous period, and uh, between ninety and ninety five million years ago. Great. And Lori, who's watching, is wondering if they've ever been covered over by glaciers at any time. Yes. They were. So um, that's what's incredible about our record here is it, we have record that goes back um, like, like the, the 300 million years up to the, the Ice Age. Um, on one of our tours, our track site tours, we actually talk about, um, we have this beautiful example of uh, moraine and glacial till and um, we, we include that as part of our, our programming. Um, and that's actually where our mammoth tusk came from mm -hmm. is, um, would have been towards the end of, of the ice age. And so this entire region would have, was covered in a, in glacier at one time. Before we leave this gallery, Zena, do you, have we seen your favorite fossil yet? Um, yes, uh, we have. Um, it is the, uh, the coelacanth, actually, that type specimen we have. Oh, the fish um, you showed us at the beginning, or the it, marine, it, the marine animal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and why is that your favorite? Um, just because of its, its uniqueness. Um, the quality of it is, is stunning. It's just, it's so beautiful to look at. Um, and you can really... I don't know. I, I just, I find that one because of its, its, its age and the fact that the coelacanth fish it can still be found um, just really speaks to uh, the longevity of, of life on this planet. And it, I, I just, I find that just absolutely fascinating. Yeah, that's kind of mind blowing to think about that amount of time. Yeah. Zena, could we get you to flip your camera back around so we can see you? 
Absolutely. Just a few logistical questions for you. Yeah. Oh, let's see if I can get this to work here. Your arm's probably getting tired, is it? Oh. I thought I hit flip. There we go. There you are. Hi again. <laughs> Hi. So can you tell us a little bit more about what your role is at the museum? Sure. Um, so I am the general manager. So I look after kind of the day-to-day -day operations. Um, I carry out the, the vision of the board. Um, I, I do many things. I do marketing. Um, I do HR. <laughs> I do, uh, it's one of those roles uh, that's a, a many hats kind of role. Absolutely. It's one of the, the great things about working in a museum, I, I find personally. Yeah. So if folks, oh, are yeah. if folks are coming up to your area and want to visit, should, what should they do? Should they get in touch with you in advance or can they just come right up to the museum? Uh, they can just come right up. Um, we are open to the public. We, we have been limiting um, the number of visitors that come in at a time, but it hasn't been a problem. Um, we've... Uh, everybody's we have lots of space um it's yeah we're 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 open and we're 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 able to uh provide most of our services right now so excellent is there is there a special program or event um happening that you want to highlight sure so we do have a, a craft program uh right now uh, so we haven't been able to do any of our on-site, our drop-in programs and our camps that we usually do. Uh, so we've been doing a, uh, like a pick up a craft program. Um, so new crafts come out every Thursday. Um, and that is actually sponsored by uh, Meekle Wind and some uh, private donor came forward so we could offer it free for the summer, which is, has been fantastic. Um, and then we also offer our track site tours. So uh, we go down to uh, the Cabin Pool track site, which is actually very close to the first uh, trackway that was found by the two boys. Um, and it's about a 90 minute tour. And that one we do ask uh, people to book in advance, but you can book that online right off our web website. Oh, fantastic. So an outdoor tour um, to one of the trackway sites coming to the museum. And I love that you've got a craft that a kid, is it, it's for kids, I'm assuming, that they can pick up and take home? It is, yeah. Yeah, we had a, we've had some really popular ones and they're all, you know, dinosaur themed. So you come in and uh, pick up your, your kit and you take it home. And uh, we ask people to, you know, post pictures after. And we've seen some really creative things. Oh, that sounds super fun. Well. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for showing us around today. If folks want to see more and they can't come up to see you, um, there is your website. And I believe Chris has posted a link to that on our um, on the chat window and on Facebook. But can you just say it out loud so we've got it for the recording too? Yeah, so it is uh, uh, www.trmf, as in Tumblr Ridge Museum Foundation, .ca. Um, all the information is, is on there. Terrific. We have um, some twin boys watching on Facebook who are enjoying this a lot. They're six years old, so that's really fun. Um, oh, perfect. There's one more question here uh, from our Zoom, one of our Zoom attendees, and she's wondering, um, would some of the tracks have been scraped away, for example, when they were covered with glaciers? Are we just lucky to have found what is there? Um, well, there, there was quite a long time period between our trackways, which are 95 million years old, um, and kind of that ice age period, which is um, actually in terms of, of longevity of the earth is quite recent. So a lot of these trackways would have been covered over by quite a bit of sediment and uh, compacted and preserved um, before, before the ice age came which is why they're so well preserved. Well, terrific. Well, Chris, if we can get you to, to stop the highlight video, 
I will wrap, I'll do some wrap up, but if you, uh, if you can hang on just a little bit longer, Zena, if there's any more questions that come through, I'll be sure to, to forward those on as well. Yeah, oh, yeah. There might be one. Oh, Lori says, thank you for answering that question. That makes sense to her. Thank you. Perfect. <laughs> Great. Well, I wanted to, again, say thank you. And if you joined us late or you missed something and you want to go back, this is being recorded and you will find it on the Royal BC Museum's YouTube channel. So please have a look there. The Royal BC Museum has reopened and we are ready to welcome you back. You can find out more about our, on our website about time, tickets, and exhibits. We have just one more stop on our summer road trip to the Niska Cultural Center, and that's going to be on September 1st. Next week, we're having a special workshop on Indigenous genealogy with BC Archives and the Library and Archives of Canada. So please join us at home at noon next Tuesday. In the meantime, everyone, Continue to take care of yourselves and one another. And thanks so much for joining us. Bye-bye. Bye, Zena. Bye. Thank you. Got a thank you here from Matthew. <laughs>